Hey guys, this is Jeff from Within Motion Hosting. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to create a individual WordPress development site that you can make all your changes on without having to impact your main production site. Um, so doing this, there, there's, there's a lot of different benefits to this. Uh, what it allows you to do is it allows you to basically test whatever changes you're making before you send them live. Because um, the worst thing you could possibly happen is a, ha, ha, possibly have is a broken website. You never want to have a broken site. So what this allow you to do is just make all your changes, everything you know, everything's working flawlessly before you move it over to your main site. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a um, subdomain there. Um, so let's do that um, in cPanel, and we're already logged into cPanel. Um, if you're not quite sure how to log into cPanel, we do have uh, various tutorials on our on our um, on our support center you can take a look at. Um, but this is just. We're already in there. Um, let's go ahead and click on subdomains. And this is under the domain section. This may be higher or lower on the list, um, just depending on your specific configuration. Mine's right here, um, and I believe that's actually the default placement. Uh, so, but let's just click on subdomains there. Now what we need to do is we just need to create a new subdomain that your, uh, your test environment will live on. So in this example, we're going to do test. Um, and we're going to do it on my main domain, uh, jeffmatson.net. So it'll be test.jeffmatson.net. Um, and that document root should automatically fill itself in. Typically what it'll be is it'll be public HTML slash whatever you put your, 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 your subdomain as. So in this example, I put, I put the test as a subdomain. And so the document root is going to be public HTML slash test. Um, so we'll just go ahead and click create and create that subdomain. And it looks like it's now created. It says test.jeffmatson.net has now been created. So we're going to go ahead and jump back. Um, go ahead and uh, click up the top right here and go back to home. And now what we need to do is we need to move our files from our main site to our testing environment. And when I say move our files, I mean copy the files, not necessarily move them. Um, so to do that, to just co make a copy of those files, we're going to click on the first one here, um, and then we're going to click on the, we're going to hold the shift key down and click on the last one. That'll highlight everything from the top to the bottom there. And of course, we're going to exclude test because that's our new testing directory here. We don't need to copy that back into itself. Um, so we'll just select those, and then we're going to go up top here and click on copy. Now what you'll see is you'll see a list of all the files that are being moved over. These are all the files in your WordPress admin. Um, or your WordPress site. So we have public HTML down here. Um, so we just need to move them into the test folder. So we're going to, at the end of public HTML, we're going to do slash test, um, which will move it into the test folder here. So we'll just click copy files there. And that's going to copy all those to the test directory. And it can take just a few minutes, so just, just be patient, let it sit there for a little while. Um, but while we're doing that, let's just jump right over to. Um, Right over, back over to cPanel, and we're going to need to create a new dom or create a new database that 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 those uh, that that test environment is going to run off of. Um, so to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to the databases section here in cPanel and go to MySQL database wizard. And what we do is we're going to create a database called test, um, and that's going to be all of the databases in cPanel are going to be prefaced with your cPanel username, then an underscore, then whatever you name the database. So, my cPanel username is JeffMA9 in this in this testing environment here. So we're and then um, and then we're going to name it test. So the full database name would be JeffMA9 underscore test. So we'll just go ahead and click next step. Now within here, we we need to go ahead and create a user. So we'll create it test as well. And then let's go ahead and add a password to that. And we've added our password, and then we go ahead and click Create User. Now we, we, we created a user, we created a database. Now that, that user needs to be able to access that database. We're going to go ahead and give that user all privileges to access that database. That user will be able to do whatever it wants to that database itself. So we're going to click on that, and then go ahead and click on Next Step. So our database is completely created and ready to rock and roll. Now what we need to do is we need to take our information that's stored in the production database and move that over to our testing database. Now to do that, um, it's just a few simple steps. Um, just involves in exporting the database from the production environment and re-importing it into the new database. Um, so to do that, we're going to go ahead and go into PHP MyAdmin, and that's going to be in your databases section here. All right, and then you're going to see over to the left, you're going to see... Um, different sections here. Um, we're just going to expand to where it says JeffMA9 and we're going to be able to see all our databases. Now I have blurred these out um, because there are various things running on them. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select our 
existing database that we're going to that we're using for our production environment. And then we go up to the top here and click export. And the default settings should be perfectly fine for you. Export method is quick and then format is SQL. Um, then we go ahead and click go. Then we pro then it's going to prompt us to download that database dump. Um, so we go ahead and click uh, save file there because we want to save it, not just open it, and then click OK. Now be sure you do know where your downloads are going. Um, I personally, they, they go in right into a downloads folder so I know exactly where they're going, but make sure you keep track of where exactly that is. Um, so now what we're going to do is since we've already exported that, we're going to go right on over to our new database, um, which was test. So we go ahead and click on that database there. Um, and of course, there's nothing in that database now. We need to go ahead and populate it. So let's click the import button here, right next to the export button. And then you're gonna, it's going to say file to import and browse your computer for it. So just click the browse button. And then we're going to open up our downloads folder. And that's going to open up... Uh, that's going to open up our information there. So we go ahead and click on that SQL file that we just downloaded. And then we go ahead and click go at the bottom. And it takes just a moment, but the import it did just successfully complete. It will tell you when it's successfully completed and the amount of queries that were executed. All right, so now what we need to do is that database was imported and ready to go. So we just need to jump back over to our file manager here, and I still had a tab open, otherwise you can just click on the file manager icon there, but I'm just going to jump over to that tab I already had open there. Um, and inside the test folder here, we're just going to jump in there, and of course, as you may know, all of your database connection information is controlled by the wp-config file. So we're just going to right click on that wp-config file and click code edit. And of course, just click the edit button again there. And now we have our full configuration for our uh, for our for our database here. Now, of course, I've blurred out my username and password because this is a, a production uh, production environment. We don't really want to see we don't really want to show it to the rest of the internet here. Uh, but we're just gonna add we're just gonna adjust it here so that we have we're just gonna add test to the, we're just gonna add our database user and a database uh, and our database name so test and then we need also need to modify our database password. And so we're going to go ahead and change that there. Um, and our database password and username have now been set. And we just go ahead and save those changes. So now what we had is we had our database. Um, we, had, we moved our files over. We moved our database, or we basically cloned our database to another location. And then we edited our wp-config file to connect to that specific database. Um, now there's another step that we're going to need to take. And this is going to be your just last final step. We're going to need to log back into the PHP MyAdmin. And I already had another tab open, so I just jumped over to that. And another, the next thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go ahead and adjust um, just a couple quick settings in, in, inside there. Um, so if you look over to the left there, it's going to show all the various different tables that you have in your WordPress app, in, in, within WordPress itself. So we're going to click on WP Options over to the left there. Now what you're going to see is you're going to see Site URL. Um, you're going to need to change that to reflect your testing environment. Otherwise, WordPress is going to keep trying to send you over to the, the, the new site. So we just click on, we, as we see, we see option name is Site URL. Just go ahead and click on edit there. And we're just going to change that to test.jeffmatson.net there. And then we just click go to send those changes over. And it looks like everything's all ready to go here. Um, but what we just want to be sure that there's nothing else in there that, that, that can cause issues. Um, so if we select our main database here and then just do a search. And we're just going to search for jeffmatson.net here. So we just want to make sure that there's nothing else in the database that's referencing that old domain. And sometimes different plugins will do it, and sometimes different other things will uh, we'll, we'll just we'll just modify that. So we're, so we're going to search inside the tables, and we're going to select all for searching inside the tables here. And we just click go. And what that'll do is it'll show you any information that's showing in there. So it looks like Ninja Forms has got something in there. there. So we might want to change that. And it just kind of depends on what it is, and, and it looks like that's just referencing in my e in, an email address that's in there. Um, so everything should be good. Let's just go ahead and just do one more search here, just to double check, because you always you never be too cautious. All 
It looks like everything looks like it's all rocking and rolling. Everything in here. Let's just double check WP options. Make sure there's nothing else in here we got to check. And actually, there's also the the uh, the home option name. We do need to change that, um, which is a good thing that we searched and and, and double checked that there. Um, so we're gonna do test.jeffmatson.net there, and just hit go, and we're all good. Great. Everything should be all set. So now it looks like we've moved everything over. We've imported everything. And uh, let's go to test.jeffmatson.net. And it looks like I have a complete copy of my existing site. Um, my existing site, it looks exactly like it did before. Everything looks to be right about me. Contact me. Everything's, all my different projects are all there. It's an exact clone of my previous site and within this I can break this site I can do whatever I want with it and users won't see it at all because it's on a separate location um, so now you know how to move everything to a testing environment um, in the next in the next video I'll create one I'll, I'll create an, uh, the next video that shows you how to move everything back um, which is essentially the same process just kind of in reverse um, so I, I hope you guys got a lot of information on this. If you have any questions or, or, or any comments or anything like that, just let us know. Um, let us know right in the comments below or the article that's also linked in there as well. You can leave a comment there. Um, and just let us know uh, your experiences. If you have any trouble, we'll, we'll be sure to help you out as much as possible. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.